Hello, 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 and welcome back, all of my beautiful friends from the internet. I hope each and every one, each and every single one of you is doing uh, just absolutely uh, spectacular on this fine Tuesday morning, or whenever you happen to be listening to this episode, whether that be morning, evening, or night. Welcome to the Reddit Asks Us podcast. I am your host, Luke Dick, uh, the podcast where we read and react to comments from r slash ask reddit. If you're listening uh, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you're listening, uh, please, please, please remember to give the podcast a rating, and also please leave us a review. You have no idea how much that helps out the show and gets that show, uh, you know, inserted into the algorithm, as you could say, Um, and uh, just, you know, gets it into the feed of the fellow beautiful friends we have on the internet. Um, Remember, you can respond to this week's Reddit question by uh, going to Spotify for you don't you don't have to pay to listen to episodes for free in Spotify and download them as well. And uh, you can go to the description of the most recent episode or any episode for that matter. And you can respond to the question. Go go. You can go to the description. You should see a white icon that says reply. And then you will be notified when your response is published. I'll read out. Uh, the most recent responses on the next week's following episode. So with that said, why don't we hop into last week? So uh, last week's episode was, what hobby is an instant red flag? And this provokes some very uh, interesting, maybe controversial conversation. But first one here comes from, Gid Gid, selling or collecting bones, why would you ever need this hobby? It gives me serial killer vibes. And my mom's stepmom sold her presents for drugs, but her father got most of it back. Well, that's good. But yeah, like with one of the hobbies was was like collecting d- animal bones and animal carcasses. It's like, that's not a hobby. That's like a fetish or something. This is like a weird, this is a strange behavior. This is not just a hobby, okay? Um, yeah, skinning animals, that's my hobby. It's like, ooh, I think that's, uh, that's your compulsion, maybe. I don't know. Um, next one comes from Stressed Human. What's going on, Stressed Human? That would be my parents' response, just, it's a choice and not a real struggle. Uh, uh, that was from the last, the other previous episode. Uh, a red flag hobby is dating someone just to break up with them to see how they react. Yeah, this is, this is, again, just people have weird dating habits and... And people treat dating as like a hobby. It's like just something they do. They have dating. You know, they just date people to date people. And then they're just like, I'm bored. Switch it up. Change it up. It's like, what? Really? You're kind of objectifying people in the worst way by treating them as just like, you know, mere instruments to your... Like, this is the people who think that, like, they're the main characters. And they'll, like, literally say that. They'll be like, everyone else is just a side character in my life. I've heard people say stuff like that. And I'm like, really? That, that You must think a lot of yourself. Um, and thank you, Luke, for the pod. Thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome, stressed human. And also, thank you. Thank you for being a loyal and dedicated listener. Um, stressed human has been with us for a long time. So thank you very much, stressed human. Uh, next one comes from Sapphire Moonlight. This is like a new person. I don't know. If, I don't think uh, Sapphire Moonlight has ever commented before. Not that not, not that I remember. Um, so thank you so much for commenting. I think guys who follow slash like other girls with revealing photos on social media while being in a relationship is a red flag. And the guys who lie about talking to other girls on social media, bruh, this just, I don't even think you have to be in a relationship for that to be strange. Like, Yo, let me just, like, stare at pictures of these women that I'll never know. I don't understand it. I, I like, I, I don't I don't get the rationale behind it. Like, when well, you're just trying to get all horned up on your Instagram feed? I'll tell you what my Instagram feed is. My Instagram feed is memes and sports. That is, and, and like, news. News, meme and, memes, and sports. That is, like, literally all that encapsulates my Instagram feed. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't look at the, at, at, at any like sexual pages or anything like that. Like, I don't just see what's the point. Like dudes will just be following just like models and shit tons of girls on Instagram and stuff. And I'm like, like, I don't, I just don't get the rationale behind it. I'm like, you're just gonna drool over someone you're never gonna meet. 
and like, yo, look at this thing that I that I can't, or look at this, look at this, look at this woman that I can't be with. I didn't mean to use objectifying language. Sorry, folks. I was, I was out of it there for a second. Um, but seriously, it's like, yeah, like, here, bro, let me show you this photo of this woman I'm never gonna date. It's like, okay, bro. Um, like, what am I supposed to do with that? Too, like, yeah, she's attractive. Like, oh, sick. You know what I mean? Like, fuck. Oh, that's so dope. You know what I mean? Like, what do you expect my reaction to be? Like, I'm not gonna be with her either. So it's like, all right. Um, next one comes from Caleb. If anyone says fishing on here, I swear to God, I'm gonna have to throw these internet hands. <laughs> yeah, I if I would defend you, fishing. I don't believe that that like fishing and and hunting are like red flag hobbies. I think it's like those are actually like well depends on how you are with it. If you're on your Instagram posting with dead animals on your social media and stuff. Yeah, that's a red flag. But if you're if if it's just something you do as a hobby, you know maybe yeah I don't I don't know like if it's something you just do, you know for your own thing I think it's actually quite a noble thing to do. Uh, it's fishing is is not hard and hunting I'm sorry fishing is not easy and neither is hunting. They're some of the most difficult things you can do, and uh, I think it takes a lot of a lot of strength to do it too because you know I think people who think that. Uh, I think there's there's a narrative out there that that um, people who hunt enjoy killing animals. I, I don't really think that's it at all. Like I I know lots of people who hunt, and I think that they would say that killing animals is like the least enjoyable part of it. I think it's more about the idea that you are that you're providing for yourself and your family in a way that honestly puts you at the forefront of the suffering. You know, because you have to watch the animal die. You have to clean it. And I think a lot of people in our society are very quick to neglect what goes into what we do in and how we treat animals in terms of our, like, actual and regular society. Like, you know, our our, our uh, society that we're accustomed to. I think a lot of people just are neglectful to, to you know, talk about how we treat those animals. But yet somehow kind of going out and, and doing it yourself in a, in a, in a way that, you know, it resembles what we've been doing as human beings for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years, that somehow that's unethical. But what we're doing in our regular lives, you know, in, in terms of the corporate aspect of the world, I don't know, I could rant about this for a while. But I think that those are those are fine hobbies. I think that it's, it's quite a noble thing to do. Um, next one comes from Grayson Sandersfeld. Answer for last week's question. I already knew about the birds and the bees at age eight and have destroyed my knowledge, my school with my knowledge. He, he. Yeah, well, um, I think that there was, uh, there was a lot of kids who, who you, you, uh, you definitely enlightened. I think that, you know, it didn't, there was a lot of kids I remember making me very enlightened and I, I, Sometimes I wish I could take it back. I was like, oh, I wish I really didn't see that. Um, I feel like I was like, I don't think that I'm supposed to be watching this. I don't think that I'm supposed to see this. I don't think that this is something. No, I, this looks, this, this, this doesn't look like me going out and pretend, you know, fighting, you know, enemy soldiers in my backyard. So I think I'm just gonna, you know, steer clear of whatever this is. Um... Phil Savannah, what's going on, Phil? Phil is another fan of ours who's been with with us for quite some time. Cockfighting, all forms, all forms. Yeah, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a there's a there's an ethical form of cockfighting. <laughs> I don't. I think that's almost an oxymoron. Ethical cockfighting, you know, that's 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 like, you know, that's like a clean oil spill, you know, uh, <laughs> like it's like well, yeah that that. Don't, don't think that those the two things are compatible. Smoking cigarettes. Not really a hobby, but for some it is. <sighs> I guess you could say this is a moral moral bro, boro. Um, I can say this is a moral boro. I don't I don't know if I get that. Red flag. Also, this is any uh, any also anyone who is an influencer. Keep it up. To be fair, Phil, I might fall into that category. I hope I hope not, but. Um, I don't know. Have I influenced any of you? Maybe not. Maybe I'm not influencing anyone at all. I'm just ranting to to the void. I'm 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 I, I my my arguments like my last argument about sneaker collecting was just not convincing. Um, 
Ne last one here comes from Vortex. What's going on, Vortex? Um, don't have one, but I binged all the episodes that I missed. I'm doing a little better now, but I might not be able to keep up the current episodes uh, because I'm having uh, the chemo. So keep up the good work, Vortex. Thank you so much, Vortex, uh, for, for hanging around and being with us. We wish you the best of health. Um, and we, you know, we all, as listeners of the show, uh, hope to see you doing well and and uh, and living uh, the the best possible life that you can be living. Because uh, we all we all wish you the greatest of health for all human beings everywhere, all the time. So uh, so thank you so much, Vortex, for being a longtime fan of the show and for 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 listening and you know during these tough times. Because yeah, like it's it's obviously. So you're you're very exper you're obviously experiencing some very you know some very tough things so we're we're here for you we we all are, um, and then we have a comment from the Dopic on YouTube, hunting for the thrill. If you hunt as a job or if you hunt for the meat, you're fine. I'm talking about the people who hunt simply for the adrenaline rush or whatever, killing animals and not even selling the meat, just leaving the body. Think of it like this: Do you really want to date someone who kills animals for fun? Also, people bring dead animals home and get them taxidermied. That's just creepy. It reminds me of that one killer who killed men and kept their corpses around until they stunk too much. I forgot his name. It's like Jeffrey Dahmer or something. Um, no, that is 100%. Killing for sport or, like, killing for trophy hunting, like, that's awful. That's terrible. Trophy hunting is so, so objectifying and um so instrumentalizing it's an awful thing to do uh, trophy hunting is just terrible 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 stuff um and also yeah i'm not a big fan of the and like even even let me say this too even with the hunting thing and you know like even though i don't have any problems with hunting or anything like that um i also am not a big fan of just when when hunters will get shit taxidermied or put a head on a board like that's fucked up that's really weird. That's really fucking weird. Okay, that you're gonna here's this animal I killed killed's head on a on a on a board. That is just awful to do. Like respect the animal, man. Like like I don't know. Like I see something about it, it, because that has no purpose but to be a trophy. And that's awful. You're objectifying that animal, reducing it to being like lesser than you, right? And that that's disgusting. Like I, I don't like that at all. Like it's different if you if you get a pelt made of the fur, right? Because then you're actually has a real practical, useful purpose. But just putting their head on a freaking piece of wood, that's just nah, that's awful. Anyways, why don't we uh hop into this week's episode? So this week's episode comes from our favorite subreddit, Ask Reddit. What is the clearest case of living in denial you've ever seen? So first one comes from Abnormally. Oh, there we go. Off to a good start. Or Abby Normally. Uh, my brother is married for the fourth time. My mother blames all his ex-wives. I keep pointing out her son is the common link to all the divorces. Yeah, I don't think you have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure that one out. So obviously your mother is in, is in quite a bit of denial here. I think she she definitely knows. There's no way you go through four divorces, all right, and and they're not. You know, there's probably some there's probably some uh, commonalities you could find between those those reasons for divorce. I'm I'm just going, I'm just guessing here, all right. But I I would I would bet my money on on. I'm gonna say that problems in all of four of these relationships were, were probably similar if not the same problems so you know that's that tends how it how, tends to be how it is when someone is in four divorces um pistol rose next one comes from pistol rose nurse who thought the lump in her breast was nothing important and the open sore appearing was also nothing important and once it started draining thought it was nothing important despite dressing it daily was confronted by co-workers after the smell became so rank it lingered where where she went stage four cancer with mets to bones and brain died soon after she was the manager of the oncology unit Edit to add, because I must not have been clear, and a lot of people see this as an autonomous choice. This was a case of living in denial. Once confronted about her odor, she admit, admitted to the sore, but still thought it was nothing. Agreed to go to the ED with the colleague slash friend, but only to reassure them. Oncologists consulted in the ED 
and she lost it when cancer mentioned insisted on everything done to treat ins- insisted on everything done to treat despite no hope died within the month never left the hospital from time confronted about the odor i guess what this really teaches us is if you are having a severe medical problem just ignore it yeah just ignore it yeah like i i recently i i actually um a piece of gym equipment when I was at the gym broke and, and sliced open my, my, my calf muscle. But you know what? Okay. How did our, our ancestors deal with these problems? They just, they just decided to, 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 to be, uh, you know, to, to be strong about it. Okay. I'm just deciding actively. This doesn't need to be sewn up. Okay. It's, it's kind of smells, it's rotting a bit, but that's what that's what real that's what real men do, right? All right? That's what a real man does. You want to heal it? Yeah, I'm so sure. I'm sure you would. Just like you want to heal everything else in your life. Well, life's not all uh sunshine and roses, okay? Sometimes you're going to get sometimes it's going to be uh you're you're going to face a couple roadblocks there. You're going to face a couple roadblocks. So why don't you just suck it up, you know? as this dude's leg is melting into the ground because it's disintegrating because of how rotten and disgusting it is. Yeah. No, this is not medical advice, okay? I am not even... I, I'm the furthest thing from a doctor on the planet Earth, okay? If, I, if you're at the point where I'm giving you medical advice, then you have made some very uh, poor choices in your life. I am no in any way, I'm not in any way giving any, any medical advice whatsoever. I hope that's obvious. But, um, but yeah, talk about, talk about denial. How could you just be like, nah, probably nothing. This, no, like, I'm feeling this big lump in my breast. It's really hard and, and it hurts like really, really bad. That sounds like breast cancer. That sounds awful. Nah, couldn't be. Couldn't be me. Nah. That's just, listen. If if breast cancer tried to attack me, I would simply just say no. I would just simply be like, hold up a minute. We're stopping this. This is stopping right now. Okay? Breast cancer? Me? What do I look what do I look like? A child? Okay, you think I'm incapable? Alright? I, I I can I no. I, I'm a I'm a strong person, okay? I'm a strong person. Tick cancer, Pfft. nothing, nothing. Open sore, just, it's fine. It's in my DNA, all right? It's in my DNA. I was bred to be this way. Next one comes from Burner Account 2002. Friend diagnosed with diabetes 10 years ago. Has needle phobia, so afraid of pricking his fingers to monitor his blood sugar and doesn't. And just eats healthy. Due to blood sugar fluctuations, gradually goes blind, kidney fails, three and a half years on dialysis, then finally gets a kidney transplant, home again with new kidney, and is still afraid of pricking his fingers and decides that he will manage his diabetes by eating healthy, just like he did for the past 10 years. Yeah, if I, I think there's, you're not going to acknowledge something's wrong with your methodology. You know, I, I was able to manage my diabetes really well. I, I ate healthy, super clean, you know, only veggies, you know, lean meats, um, a lot of fruit, uh, you know, whole grains, but not too much, um, just really healthy diet, you know, and, and, and it worked, you know, and, um, I, you know, my, my kidney failed, I went blind, but, and then I, you know, it was, it was, um, you know, just, it wasn't a great scene, but, but you know what, if, if I wasn't eating healthy, that would have just happened sooner. I'm telling you, man, would have just happened sooner. So it's because, you know, that I ate healthy that that I I I was able to um you know have that that opportunity of of almost you know almost dying, you know, but 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 staying alive and being alive for as long as I did. Well, what did the doctor say? You know what? Dr. Schmachter. Okay. Not important what the doctor said. Okay, what's important is what I do. All right. Are you trying to say that I'm not healthy? Are you trying to say that I'm not lean and jacked and ripped? It's like, well, you're very lean. Uh, yes. Um, you look uh, sick, um, dying, 
Um, you look like Christian Bale's character from The Machinist. That's that's how you look right now. You look awful. Um, so I think maybe you should go with the doc on this one. I think you should go for the uh, trusted scientific medical advice. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, what the, that's what they all say, right? That's what they want you to do. They want you to just stick the needle in, right? They, they want you to get the jab. I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. No, it's conspiracy, right? First, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a diabetes prick, all right, in my finger. And next, they're going to be inserting a computer chip in there, all right, deep in the brain. It's going to coat my brain in tinfoil. All right, you watch. Just wait. Just wait and see. Well, doesn't that Jonas guy have diabetes and he's been like really good for the past like ever? He uses like regular mainstream stuff. Nah, that's what they want you to think. Yeah, that's what they want you to think. Next one comes from two plastic lobsters. That'd be my father and my mother. Uh, was manic depressive. Oh, that'd be my my quote unquote father. My quote unquote mother was manic depressive, as it was called back then. She had several major breakdowns during my childhood. Every time he'd act like nothing was wrong, she'd be screaming and throwing things, and he'd try to placate her. It never worked. She's just she's just upset. She's just she's tired. She's just tired. All right, honey, go to bed, honey. Yep. Yep, go, yep, you're, you're, you sleep it off, sleep it off, you'll wake up, have some sleep, you'll wake up feeling like a brand new person, honey. A couple times I pointed out that she needed to be committed. He always responded that a person couldn't be committed unless they're a danger to themselves or others. True, but she obviously was. I was terrified of her. Even apart from the breakdown, she threw rage attacks at the drop of a hat. Long story short, in my 20s, I found out that A, they'd had two kids before me, and B, she drowned them in a bathtub during a psychotic episode. Holy shit. What I never found out was how she, uh, was how she, something realized, or why she was able to con conceive me less than a year later. Uh, a friend was with me when I found out about B. He told me later that he'd always thought I was exaggerating when I said I'd fear for my life as a kid. I couldn't blame him. It did sound outlandish. After that, it was even more baffling that my father thought we were safe living with her. So what? She drown a couple kids. Okay? She is tired. Alright? She is just... She is exhausted. Alright? She's just a... She's, and you know how people get when they are tired. They get cranky. Okay, she's just a little cranky. A little, got a good little case of the morning grumps. Okay, have you never had a little cranky? You never had a little case of the morning grumps? All right, like she's just, she's irritated. All right, and you know how your mother gets when she's irritated. Okay, so please stop. <laughs> please, I'm begging you. Yeah, holy shit, your father was in denial. That is a wild story. Holy crap. How is she not in jail? She drowned kids. This woman needs to be committed. This is not even an option. This is like the law. She committed murder. Okay, not even murder. Not even like, not, not, not just murder. Infanticide. Okay, that's like, that's like up there with one of the worst kinds of murder. All right, and your dad was just like, ha, that's just, that's just Kathy. Ha, what, what a, what a, what a jokester she is. What a, oh, she's just a prankster, that Kathy. Ha, <laughs> you know, oh, this, she got back at me for not doing the dishes. Ah, oh, I, 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 no, that's, no, she is, this is a big problem. Okay, I think this is more than just maybe manic depressive. She might actually be clinically insane. Okay, this is this is a this is a big problem. You're living with a murderer. Oh my lord. I mean, I mean, I hope this goes without saying, but my my deepest condolences for you. This sounds wildly traumatizing. Okay, this sounds just just uh unbelievably uh just e extreme in the most, you know, real sense. So my 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 uh my thoughts are with you on this cuz that is just incredible. Holy crap. Um 
you know, if remember, just in case, you know, we like to have fun on this podcast, and, and obviously, yeah, uh, we're making fun of this very obviously um, uh, ignorant and neglectful father, but, um, you know, if you're having problems at home, please reach out to people, please, uh, please talk to people. It's very important, um, you know, that, that we, we, we all are able to grow up and live in safe environments, you know, not where our dads are completely delusional, um, you know, about our mother being a murderer. So there we go. Uh, next one comes from Weezer's Mom 14. I know a guy who tested positive for HIV about 11 years ago. He pretended it didn't happen and did nothing about it. Today he is dying from AIDS. He's not even 40. So sad. And you know what? This is even more annoying because there's like, like, I guess there's no like cure for AIDS, but there's like really advanced treatments too. Like, I mean, I don't really know much about the treatments, so I couldn't really speak on whether or not, you know, they're invasive or like how, how uncomfortable these treatments might've been, you know, if they, that this person might've not have admitted it because they've got the similar needle prick problem. But, and also, by the way, get vaccinated. What the fuck? Okay, when I was a kid, I hated needles. All right, I hated them. But uh, if I didn't have needles as a kid, I'd ha- I would have gotten polio or something. Okay? I would have died of, like, meningitis. <laughs> okay? Like, like this is, this is why we get our vaccines, so we don't die. Okay, and a lot of these vaccines, I'm pretty sure they last for life. Okay? I mean, this is a hump, a hurdle we need to all get over, okay? You know what stopped us from having a, 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 a complete destruction of society and a breakdown of the way in which we live modern life? Vaccines! It just happened, okay? COVID just happened, all right? And you know how we were able to get through an entire global pandemic in like two years? That's right. Get your fucking vaccines. And go for your medical treatment, bro. Like, what do you think? You're just going to walk it off? Yeah, like, HIV? It's not like a little cold? <laughs> no, it's actually uh, it's an immuno disorder that's going to, you know, completely rob you of your immune system and kill you. Um, and it's not pretty. It's gonna, But, you know, you can take this very easy treatment that will... You know, in a lot of cases, it actually gets rid of the virus from your body almost completely. There's no traces left of it. We'll keep you on the treatment. But, um, but yeah, in a lot of cases, we don't see basically any, any signs of, of the, the, the virus anymore, which is a great achievement in medical advancement. You know what? I'm, I'm going to take the high road on this one, Doc. Okay. All right. I'm going to take the high road on this one. I know your games. You're trying to play here. All right. Your manipulation games. I'm I'm not down with it. I'm gonna walk this one off, <laughs> Doc. All right, I'm gonna walk this one off. So, all right, nice try, nice try. It's like nice. Okay, have fun dying, um, of something that's very preventable. Uh, next th- next one comes from the Thalmer Embassy. That sounds cool, Thalmer. I don't know if that's like a planet or something like that. I'd like to visit there. It sounds interesting. My sister wears flannel shirts and has really short hair and drives a Subaru and wears a battle axe necklace and has a pile of Sports Illustrated swimsuit editions and a lesbian pride flag in her room and my mom still hasn't figured out that she's gay. She's just eccentric, okay? She's a supporter, all right? She is, she is, um, an advocate, but no daughter of mine is gonna be gay, Okay? No daughter. She was raised in a Christian home. She knows those things don't exist. Okay? She can advocate for whatever she wants. But she's not gay. Okay? It's like she she literally has a girlfriend. She moved out because you said you wouldn't accept her if she was gay. She's literally told you she was gay. She's just having a moment. Okay, it's a phase. This is just a phase. God. Uh, Marl Bay replies and says, my mother was the opposite. She knew my sister was gay by putting together pieces of evidence that weren't actually there. My mom with an aura of confident uh, confidentiality. I think your sister is a lesbian. Me. Why would you think that? Mom. 
Well, she's a theater kid, yet close friends she's made in college are all on the volleyball team. One of them must be her girlfriend. Me, is there any other reason you think that, other than the theater kids don't hang out with volleyball players unless they're all lesbians? Mom, no, not really. A few months later, my sister tells me, don't tell my mom. Don't tell mom, but I'm a lesbian. Well, there was probably... I don't know if it was the theater thing. You know, because our daughter's just... Your sister's just so into theater. She's so into the theater. And I think she might be gay. Really, Mom? You don't think it has anything to do with the pride flags everywhere? You know, the, the, the attendance of the protests? You know, the, the fact that she's never brought any men over ever? It's only girls, and they go to their room and close the door, and you don't think, you know, not, nothing at all that might indicate, you know, that she's always talking about female celebrities that she's got crushes on. She's never once brought up a dude, never once brought up a guy. You know what? No, I don't think it's that. She just has a lot of friends, okay? And she wants a lot of friends, okay? That stuff doesn't make her gay. Okay, she just likes to be a part of a community, okay? But now I'm starting to spec something because of this theater stuff, okay? Theater does not mean gay, folks. I did theater for a long time, okay? And I'm not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with being gay or doing theater. You can do both, together or separately. Next one comes from Star Glitter. My mother, now deceased... Refused to wear her glasses because she hated how they looked on her. Instead, she insisted her eyesight was not that bad, and the fact we had to read menus to her at restaurants and was uh, was just a cute quirk. Mom, uh, you've gotten into like seven car accidents over the past year. You don't think maybe it has something to do with, I don't know, the fact that you can't see, okay? Um, you have drove your car into the curb multiple times. We've had to get the tires replaced, like, literally seven times this year. Because the amount of accidents and collisions you've got yourself in, too. Like, you don't think it has anything to do... It's just... No. See, that's just a, that's just a personality quirk. Okay, I'm just... I'm just not a great driver, okay? I've just never been one for driving. Uh, yeah, because you're blind, Okay, because you literally can't see. Uh, that's that. I wouldn't call that a personality quirk. Okay, I would say that uh, you have a visual impairment. You are visually impaired. The driver's license, the 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 insurance agency, uh, I guess you call it the DMV in in the U.S. I don't know what you call it. In I mean, in Canada, we have license issues. All insurance companies and stuff. Uh, literally took your license away. The government took away your license. You're not allowed to drive. They demanded that you get an eye test. And the optometrist said, you're blind. He's like, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're, they need, if they want to know anything about me, then they need a personality doctor. Hmm. Well, that's also called a psychiatrist. Um, and you probably should see one because you're in complete denial right now. So yeah, maybe you should go and see a psychiatrist. Reply from Ice Phoenix 18 my stepdad once asked, when are they going to put the letters on those big green signs while driving on the freeway? I've never gotten in a car with him since. He insists he was joking, but past evidence indicates he wasn't. Little edit. For the record, I have reported him in the past. I haven't spoken to him in years, and I live in a completely separate area of the world from him now, so I have no way of, no way of knowing if he still drives. I truly hope not. Well, it's it's probably... I don't know. If you're open to a little bit of constructive criticism, okay? No hate. A little bit of constructive criticism. Maybe you could have done more to to make sure that he's not on the driving on the road if he, I don't know, can't see the road signs, can't read them. I think that it, that's a pretty big factor in whether or not you should be behind the wheel of a vehicle. That's just my opinion, though. That's maybe just my my thoughts, my two cents on the matter. Um, next one comes from Broccoli Octopus. Octopus, buddy, buddy keeps complaining that normal guys won't respond to him on dating apps and keeps getting hit on by creepy old dudes. 
Uh, you're nearly 60, and those are age-appropriate matches. Yeah, that's delusional. Why can't I just find someone with my interests? You know, um, late nights, uh, you know, college, um, just... You know what? Movies and 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 Instagrams and Facebooks and Twitters and 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 uh, Ryan Gosling's. Why can't I find someone who's into that stuff? Well, those people are all Gen Z and Millennial people, uh, for the most part. So um, maybe you should uh, focus on not trying to date. You know young people really because they're not in your age demographic that is not that is weird you are it seems like you're trying to seems like there's a bit of a there's a bit of a goal here for you a little bit of an ulterior motive okay uh unk so or buddy this is just his buddy yeah well you know that's that makes sense when you're 60 you not not a whole lot of 20 year olds are too interested in dating you just just you know just as a general sort of thing people are looking for someone they can spend the rest of their lives with not the rest of your life um next one comes from all shawl man ex's mom moved to vegas from europe went broke gambling over 10 years or uh 10 years or so 10 or so years Practically homeless. Then she got injured on a casino escalator and was compensated more than fairly with a life-changing amount of money. Guess who went broke again? Pretty much exclusively at the same casino. Well, you know, it's only right that I spend that money where these kind people decided to give it to me. Right? If I fell in a burger shop, I'd be buying their burgers for the rest of my life, wouldn't I? Because it wasn't their fault. Okay, they made mistakes. Okay, people make mistakes. If I fell in a mall, I'd go shopping there. I just happened to fall in a casino. Okay? So, the least I can do is give them my business. Okay, well, giving them your business means uh, gambling all your money away. So, you know, maybe not the greatest use of the, of the, the cash that you got. That cash infusion. Um, next one comes from Re Ra Ravesher. My, di my dismissive avoidant mom was a master of denial. The worst was when she got into an, got an abscess in her pelvic area. She was in 10 out of 10 pain, couldn't sit up, was literally white knuckling a body pillow while laying on the couch, unable to move for a week. And when I was age 10, uh, would suggest she would go to a doctor it was all no 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 i'm totally fine i don't i don't want to see a doctor this woman literally scheduled an appointment with a specialist and waited the 10 days uh, for the appointment instead of going to urgent care she drove herself there in 10 out of 10 pain the doctor took one look at her and told her to put a gown on and meet her downstairs for immediate surgery they drained so much oh they drained so much stuff from her and she had to have the gauze packing to heal the crater left behind. Oh, that's disgusting. It's a miracle she didn't get sepsis. Bonus story. She suddenly became allergic to ibuprofen in her 40s and turned beet red after taking some. Instead of going to the doctor, she went to her hair appointment like normal. Hairdresser refused to cut her hair and made her go to the doctor. My mom just went home instead and laid on the couch, huffing and puffing until the reaction went away. She told me this story like it was, like it was totally sane and a normal thing to do. You know what? When in doubt, when when it comes to any medical emergency, when in doubt, sleep it off. It's my number one rule. When it comes to suffering and pain, sleep it off, okay? It is most likely a problem that can be solved with just a little rest, okay? Just shut eye, you know, a little honk shoe, and you will be feeling like a million bucks, the next day obviously this is not medical advice i i do not sanction any action based on my medical advice because it is not medical advice it is just a joke making fun of obviously this very strange woman who decided to have 
go into anaphylactic shock and just sleep it off. You know, I'm allergic to to peanuts and nuts and all sorts of stuff. And if I started having allergic reaction, I think I don't think my first thought would be, "Eh, it's fine. I'm built different." You know what? I, I can tell I'm not going to die from this. I know. I know I'm not going to die from this. You don't think your throat's going to close up on you while you're sleeping and you suffocate and die? Nah. I'm not built like that. I'm not like you, okay? You underestimate me. Okay, my my strength is on another level. All right? Uh, this that That is disgusting, though. An abscess? Come on, bro. What? How, like, come on, how do you, how, how, no, how delusional do you have to be to just look at that, something like that, and be like, all good, I'll wait, I don't want the, uh, the emergency room to be taken up by someone who doesn't need the spot, it's like, um, mom, those are for people who, you know, have, like, a sprained ankle, you have a massive abscess that's gonna, like, kill you, okay, those spots are meant for you, Okay, those 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 spots are literally meant for you. Um, ne- let me do one more here. F- uh, Flanny Flannery's Peacock says, "My dad has PSP slash dementia. My mom refused to acknowledge that it was a developing problem because it was an in it was an inconvenience to their lifestyle. I confronted her because he needed to have his driver's license taken away because he was a danger on the road." My dad impulsively went out one day, bought a BMW without without her present, and later drove it underneath a semi-truck. And shocker, that was when she realized he was unwell. I also had to find out through extended family about this accident because she didn't want to give us the satisfaction of being right all along. Really? That's that's what's the most concerning thing. No, not the health of my father. No, it's it's that whether or not we're going to tell you I told you so. That's the important takeaway of this situation is whether or not I'm going to tell you, yeah, we were right. Dad is mentally unwell. He bought a BMW and drove it under a semi truck. Okay. He is constantly folding his laundry and putting it in the freezer. Right? This is not normal behavior. Your father is just a bit eccentric. Okay. He's just a bit different. Well, Mom, he hasn't always been doing that. He put his clothes away where they were supposed to go for, I don't know, 40 years? Maybe more? His whole life, potentially. 50, 60 years, maybe? No, but he just decides to be a little quirky now. Jesus Christ. All right, thank you so much uh, for having gaffes and laughs and... uh, uh, and a lot of fun with me on this podcast. Thank you all so much. I, I want to thank each and every single one of you. Remember, uh, this is the Reddit Ask Sauce Podcast, the podcast where we read and react to comments from r slash ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Remember, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcast, please, please, please leave us a rating and also please leave us a review. You can answer this week's Reddit question by going to the description in Spotify and uh, clicking the icon that says reply and you will be notified when your response is published. Now, read that response out loud on the next week's following episode. I love each and every single one of you. Peace out. Love you. Goodbye. <laughs>